Look with me in Isaiah chapter 40, and I have a word to share with you from the Lord for the new year. Isaiah chapter 40, going to begin reading in verse 5. God is speaking, and he says, To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them forth each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by God? Do you not know? Have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young soldiers stumble and fall. But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. I have a word from the Holy Spirit for you for 2015 and that is rise above. Would you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come speak to us? Father, thank you for this evening. Lord, I thank you for these precious people who belong to you. And I thank you for their hearts, Lord, that on New Year's Eve have come first before they do anything. They've come to inquire of you, Lord. They've come to seek your face, Lord. They've come to worship. They've come to sow a seed. They've come to honor you, Lord, at the crown of this closing year and at the beginning of this coming year. Father, I pray that we would encounter you through the ministry of your word this evening. If your heart agrees with that, just say amen and amen. Well, one week ago tonight, I was sitting at our Christmas Eve dinner table and the Holy Spirit dropped into my heart the word that I'm sharing with you this evening. Actually, all he said to me at the dinner table were two words, rise above. And then the scripture popped into my mind, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to release a word of encouragement into your heart tonight. I believe he wants to renew hope where perhaps hope has faded. I believe he wants to restore faith where perhaps faith has grown weary. I believe that he wants to return focus where perhaps focus has been lost. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40 was written to a group of people who needed a boost. It was written to the Jewish prisoners of war who were languishing in Babylon. They had suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Lives and livelihoods and properties were lost. Families were torn apart. Children were carried away into captivity. Their city was burned to the ground. Their national pride was shattered. Their temple and their religion and their God was humiliated. And now decades later, they were still stuck in Babylon, wondering whether God had forgotten them. Why do you keep saying, Jacob, why do you keep complaining, Israel, my plight is hidden from the Lord. My unjust suffering is disregarded by my God. They had two question marks in their hearts. The first one was, have I moved beyond his power now? Maybe my situation is too far gone now. Maybe too much damage has been done. Maybe I'm in too deep. Maybe too much time has gone by. Too much water has passed under the bridge now. I'm too old now. I'm too weak now. I'm too sick now. Perhaps I am so far gone that not even God himself can bring me back. 
The other question mark was, have I moved beyond his compassion now? Maybe I've crossed over the line just one too many times. I'm undeserving of his rescue now. He has moved on from me. I'm no longer even on his radar screen. He's not interested in me anymore. You know, as the cares and the setbacks and the sorrows of this life wear on us, I find that sometimes we too struggle with the same question marks in our heart. Perhaps I have moved beyond his power now. Or perhaps I have moved beyond his compassion. Perhaps God cannot help me at this point. Or perhaps he just doesn't care to. But God answers our question marks with a resounding no. And here's the beautiful thing in Isaiah chapter 40. Instead of forsaking us when our faith is weak, God comes closer to fortify us. Instead of giving us the silent treatment because we've grown weary and we've succumbed to worry, God sends his word of promise to steady us and to strengthen us. How does God answer our question marks? Well, he answers them with one of the best loved promises in the entire Bible. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Or maybe we could say it this way. They shall rise above. <laughs> Beloved, tonight God wants to come into this sanctuary and he wants to answer every question mark in your heart. Not with a rebuke, but with a word of promise. As you wait on the Lord in 2015, He is going to enable you to rise above. As you wait on the Lord, He's going to enable you to rise above regrets over your past. He's going to enable you to rise above your failures. He's going to enable you to rise above shame. He's going to enable you to rise above guilt and condemnation. He's going to enable you to rise above shattered confidence. As you wait on the Lord, he's going to enable you to rise above a victim's mentality. Listen to me. This is a word from the Holy Spirit for someone in this place tonight. As you wait on the Lord, he's going to enable you to rise above self-pity. He's going to enable you to rise above an orphan spirit. He's going to enable you to rise above a bitter spirit, a wounded spirit, a sorrowful spirit. As you wait on the Lord, he's going to enable you to rise above rejection. He's going to enable you to rise above the criticism that has crippled you. He's going to enable you to rise above the drivenness to please people and to meet expectations that are not his. As you wait upon the Lord, he's going to enable you to rise above every unhealthy relationship in your life that is holding you back from soaring. You an eagle, and you've been hanging around with the turkeys? God is going to give you grace to rise above. As you wait on the Lord, he's going to enable you to rise above your pain. I feel like somebody needs to hear this tonight. As you wait upon the Lord, he's going to enable you to rise above church hurts. Whether it was a pastor, or whether it was a church leader, or whether it was a fellow member who hurt you, God is going to enable you to rise above it. Amen. Beloved, listen, I know that painful things happen in church. I grieve over them. I, I, I am so sorry over them. Sometimes they happen here, sometimes they happen in other places. But listen to me, don't you ever withhold worship from a good God because a flawed man hurts you. As you wait upon the Lord, he's going to enable you to rise above every pattern of self-defeating thinking and self-defeating behavior that has held back the generations of your family. He's going to enable you to rise above addictions. 
He's going to enable you to rise above dysfunction. He's going to enable you to rise above every curse of poverty. God is going to come and he's going to break curses of poverty off the families in this congregation. As you wait on the Lord, he's going to enable you to rise above despair and the apathy that comes with it. He's going to enable you to rise above dead ends. He's going to enable you to rise above every obstacle and barrier that is standing in your way, every roadblock in your career. I feel like this is a word for someone in the house tonight. As you wait on the Lord, he's going to enable you to rise above writer's block. And he's going to enable you to rise above everything that is stifling your creativity. They that wait upon the Lord in 2015 shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall rise above. Yes. Now if the condition for rising above is to wait upon the Lord, what does that mean exactly? What is this waiting? In the book of Isaiah, that word wait is used six times. And it is used synonymously with the word trust. Isaiah 8, 17 says, I will wait for the Lord. I will put my trust in him. Yes. Looking at God's words in Isaiah 40, it's a beautiful chapter. Didn't read the whole thing. You should read it all tonight. But in Isaiah 40, I find that waiting or trusting means to hold on to a majestic view of God in spite of the present conditions in the world or in my life. Yes. See, the fall of Jerusalem and the captivity in Babylon had caused the Jewish prisoners to question God in their hearts. Perhaps I have moved beyond his power now. Maybe he can't reach all the way to Babylon. Perhaps I have moved upon, uh, beyond his compassion now. Uh, it's too far gone now. I'm too far gone. And sometimes problems in the world, and especially problems in our own lives, cause us to ask the same questions. But God says in response, have you forgotten who I am? Have you forgotten what I'm like? In the face of our struggles, God reminds us of five majestic truths about himself that help us trust in him. Five majestic truths about God that help us trust in Him. I want to look at them very quickly. First of all, God is eternal. Do you not know? Have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God? How does God's eternality help me personally? Well, that God is eternal means that He is equally present to all points of time at once. What that means in plain English is that God is already in my future. He has already gone out ahead of me. He has already gone out ahead of you. He has already scoped out my 2015. He has already scoped out your 2015. He already knows what the year holds for you. He already knows what the year has in store for you. And here's the really cool thing. He speaks promises to us today that pertain to our tomorrow that he has already seen. Do you realize that Isaiah 40 was written 120 years before the end of the Babylonian captivity? The people whom God is addressing through the prophet Isaiah haven't even been born yet. But the eternal God had already been to Babylon and he had already been back again and he gave his word of promise ahead of time. There's a very interesting line in the Lord's Prayer. You all know it this way. Give us this day our daily bread. The interesting thing about that line is that in the original language, it literally says, give us 
today the bread of tomorrow. The thought is that it was a prayer prayed by laborers in the evening that God would give them in the morning the opportunity to work and the strength to work. The Jewish people actually regarded as the new day beginning at sundown with food and with rest first in order to gain strength to work in the morning. Father, give me tonight the strength that I'm going to need for tomorrow. Father, give me tonight the wisdom that I'm going to need for tomorrow. Father, give me tonight the guidance that I'm going to need for tomorrow. Father, give me tonight the maturity, the character, the patience, the love that I'm going to need for tomorrow. Father, give me tonight the opportunity that I'm going to need for tomorrow. And that is absolutely what God is doing in Isaiah 40. He is giving us tonight the bread that we need for tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the day after. <laughs> Jesus said that just like bread, God's word sustains us. God's word nourishes us. It strengthens us. It gives us stamina. And so the eternal God who has already been in my tomorrow is giving me today the bread, the word of hope that he knows that I'm going to need for each coming day of this new year. Last Wednesday at my Christmas Eve dinner table, this is the bread of tomorrow. This is the word of hope for 2015 that the eternal God gave me to share with you as you wait upon him in the new year. You will rise above. <laughs> Five majestic truths about God that help us to trust him. The second is God is eternal and secondly God is everywhere. Do you not know? Have you not heard that the Lord is the creator of the ends of the earth? What does God's omnipresence mean to me personally? Well, just like the eternal God is already in my future, it means that wherever life may take me this year, he is already there. There's not a single square inch on this earth that is unknown to God or is beyond his presence. David said, where can I go that you're not present? If I'm soaring in the heavens, you are there. If I'm going through hell, you are there. If I'm as far away from home as I could possibly be, even there, your hand is still holding me. Beloved, receive tonight the bread of tomorrow. Receive tonight a word of hope for 2015. Wherever you may go in this coming new year, he is already there. If you go for a job interview, he's already there. If you start a new career, he's already there. If you have to leave your home, he's already there. If you get called into your boss's office, he's already there. If you have to go to court, he's already there. If you have to go to the emergency room, he's already there. If you're waiting for test results to come, he's already there. If you're going to the chapel and you're going to get married, he's already there. That's prophetic for someone in this place. When you wake up every morning of this new year, he is already there. When you arrive at your workplace, he's already there. When you walk through your door again at night, he is already there. When you come to worship at Harvest Time Church, he is already here. Every moment of every day, anywhere and everywhere, he is already there. Five majestic truths about God that help us trust him. Number three, God is always at work. Do you not know? Have you not heard? He will never grow tired or weary. I'm not sure that anything else in all of creation has more energy than a young boy. <laughs> Did you ever watch an all the parents of boys said, 
Amen. You ever watch boys running around? You ever watch boys playing in the water? They're like the Energizer Bunny. They just keep going and going and going. And, and what do adults always say? Oh, I wish I could bottle that energy, right? And yet even young boys crash eventually. My son Ben goes 100 miles an hour all day long, but I want to tell you, the second his head hits the pillow, poof, he's gone. God says in Isaiah 40, think about the strength of young men who have just come out of special forces training. Think about the strength of a young Navy SEAL. Think about the strength of a young Green Beret. Think about the strength of an Army Ranger. And yet even they eventually run out of strength. We spend one third of our lives asleep recharging our batteries for the next day, but not God. He never gets sleepy. He never nods off. The psalmist said, he that watches over you never slumbers or sleeps. And whether you're asleep or whether you're awake, he is always working on your behalf. The psalmist said, he is your keeper. That word means he's a hedge of thorns around you, protecting you from predators. He's your cover, protecting you from the burning heat of day and the cold of night. He's your helper. He is your steady guide. Receive tonight this bread of tomorrow, this word of hope for 2015. Every moment of this new year, God will be working on your behalf. Five majestic truths about God. You doing all right this evening? All right, we're coming down the home stretch. Number four, God is wise beyond our ability to comprehend. Do you not know? Have you not heard that no one can fathom his wisdom? God has a little fun in Isaiah 40. He's mocking the Babylonian gods. The Babylonians were astrologers and they looked at the movement of the stars to find guidance for their life. There are still some people who look at the movement of the stars to find guidance for their life. Beloved, listen, if you read your horoscope every day, you just tear it up and throw it away because there are no answers in the stars for you. That's good preaching right there. God says, lift up your eyes to the heavens. Who created all of these? He brings out the starry host one by one, and he calls them each by name. And because of his great strength, not one of them is missing. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, by the way, that's a picture of the Milky Way. Our galaxy is a hundred and four light years across. If you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you a hundred and four years to cross our galaxy. There are 100 billion stars in the Milky Way. If you counted them at the rate of one per second, it would take you 3,000 years more than to count every star in our galaxy. And now thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope, astronomers estimate that there are at least 100 billion galaxies in the universe. Surely we are dwarfed by the size of creation. But creation is still dwarfed by the size of our great God. God says, do you see all of those stars? I know every one of them by name. I set each one into its orbit and I hold each one in its place. And beloved, listen, here's the truth. God is not too big to notice little old me. He is too big not to notice me. 
If God knows the names of a hundred billion stars in the Milky Way, and he knows the names of the stars in a hundred billion other galaxies, then keeping up with a mere six billion people on Earth is easy peasy for him. <laughs> and listen... God has said that any one of us, anyone, is more valuable to him than the rest of creation put together. You are more valuable to God than a hundred billion stars in the Milky Way. You are more valuable to God than all the stars in a hundred billion galaxies. He didn't shed his blood for any one of them, but he shed his blood for you. The stars do not guide us. God guides the stars and God guides us. And here's the truth. Life is often bewildering to us, but it is not bewildering to him. Just like we can't even see all the stars in our own galaxy, there are depths to God's wisdom that we simply cannot access. But he knows what he's doing. So we don't live by explanations, we live by his promises instead. We don't figure out God with our brains, we simply surrender to him in faith. Receive tonight the bread of tomorrow, the hope uh, for 2015. Whatever came your way in 2014 that left you perplexed, whatever came your way that left you confused, whatever came your way that left you disheartened, maybe disillusioned with God, just wait. Choose to trust Him anyway. <laughs> Waiting means that I'm going to trust His methods, no matter how unorthodox or how counterintuitive they seem to me. Waiting means that I'm going to trust his pace. I'm going to trust his timing. No matter how slow, no matter how overdue it seems to me. You see, waiting is what faith does before God's answer shows up. David said, I would have given up unless I believed that I would see in the land of the living the goodness of the Lord. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Waiting means that in spite of my present circumstances, I'm going to live in confident hope like Daniel did for 70 years. Do you know who was reading Isaiah 40 a hundred years after it was written? Daniel was reading it. And what he read gave him the faith to wait. Waiting means that I'm going to keep searching the scriptures to see what God has to say about my situation. Waiting means that I'm going to keep on praying into his promises. That's what Daniel did three times a day, kneeling in his window facing Jerusalem. He found a promise that said, if you get taken into captivity, if you pray facing Jerusalem, I'll heal your prayer and I'll deliver you from captivity. And so he just kept praying into that promise. That's waiting day after day after day. Even when they made praying illegal, he said, no, no, you're not going to stop me from praying. I have a promise from God. Amen. Waiting means I'm going to keep on worshiping. Waiting means I'm going to keep on living a focused life. Because I believe with my whole heart that my breakthrough is already on the way. Amen. Waiting means that even though I'm in Babylon, I'm going to cultivate an atmosphere around me where the Holy Spirit can dwell. Waiting means I'm not going to defile myself with Babylonian delicacies. Waiting means I'm not going to bow down to Babylonian idols. Waiting means I'm not going to let them take away my God-given identity and name me after a Babylonian god. Beloved, receive tonight the bread of tomorrow. Receive the word of hope for 2015. Trust his promise even when you don't understand his plan.
five majestic truths about God to help us trust Him. Worship team, come and help me. God is eternal. God is everywhere. God is always at work. God is wise beyond our ability to comprehend. And finally, this is my favorite one. God is always willing to share His strength with us in our weakness. Mm, this is good preaching right here. I just, I just preached myself right over to happy. I, just, I could just sit down on my chair and speak in tongues right now. <laughs> Do you not know? Have you not heard? He gives strength to the weary. And he increases the power of the weak. If you're weary, I have good news for you tonight. You are just exactly where you need to be to get something from God. If you're watching my live stream and you were too sick to get your body to this church this evening, I have good news for you tonight. You are exactly where you need to be to get something from God tonight. The power of infirmity is going to be broken off of you. The spirit of infirmity is going to loose you. It's going to let you go. You are going to rise above this sickness. You are still going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Maybe this is the greatest truth out of all of them. Or at least it's the one that brings all the others home to me. The best news of all is that God takes some of his own infinite, inexhaustible strength. And he shares some of that with me. What can I expect for 2015? What can you expect for 2015? Well, I can't tell you what's going to happen with the economy. I can't tell you what's going to happen on Wall Street. I, I can't tell you what's going to happen with your company. I can't tell you what's going to happen with your family or your friends. I, I can't tell you what's going to happen with your car or your washer and dryer or your furnace. I can't tell you what's going to happen with your health can't tell you what's going to happen here at Harvest Time Church. can't tell you what day the Holy Spirit's going to show up again and just wham us all. I don't know what's going to happen, but I can tell you this. The eternal God has already been through your 2015 and back again, and He has made you this promise. As you wait on him, as you trust in him, he's going to keep on giving you portions of his own great unlimited strength. Even the youths grow tired and weary. Even the fit young men grow faint and stumble. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You know that word renew, it's actually the word exchange. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall exchange their strength. They will trade their feeble, finite human strength for his infinite supernatural strength. God's going to take away what's weak in me and he's going to replace it with all the strength that is in him. this little picture up here it was a story that was in the news earlier this year it's a dad who has a disabled daughter and her disability is such that she lacks the muscle strength and the muscle control to walk and so the dad he created a special contraption a special pair of shoes and he puts her feet next to his feet and he straps her to his legs and he walks with her so that she can have the experience of walking, so that she can know what it feels to stand up 
upright with dignity and to walk so that she can have the pleasure of going somewhere. And that's exactly what the Lord does for us. They that wait upon the Lord shall exchange their strength. When I have no strength left to walk, he straps me to his legs. He straps my feet to his feet and he walks with me and he gives me the pleasure and the joy of walking upright with dignity. He gives me the pleasure and the joy of going places, but it's not my strength, it's his strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall rise above despair. Harvest time, listen to me. I'm prophesying over you. You shall rise above hopelessness and the paralysis that it causes. You shall rise above doubt. You shall rise above oppression. You shall rise above captivity. You shall rise above self-pity. You shall rise above failure. You shall rise above poverty. You shall rise above dysfunction. You shall rise above the impurity of Babylon. You shall rise above shame. They shall run away from Babylon and not grow weary. They shall walk all the way back to Jerusalem and they will not grow faint until they've made it home again to Father's arms. Harvest Time Church, you listen to me. You're going to make it. You're going to make it through 2015. You're going to make it through alive. You're going to make it through in one piece. You're going to make it through victoriously. God is going to keep giving you portions of His inexhaustible strength every day while you wait upon the Lord. Oh, teach me, Lord.